In this video, we're going to look at the calculations involved with heating and cooling curves. These are going to be single step. You will also need a calculator for these. So if you don't have a calculator, go ahead and grab one so you can work through these with me. All right. I know this looks like a lot. Let me try to break it down so it's not as overwhelming. First of all, you're familiar with the equation that we're going to be using for many of these. The energy is equal to mc delta t. Q is going to be the energy, which again, you're familiar with this equation, so hopefully this part is just review. The C is going to be our specific heat. The units for specific heat are joules over grams degrees Celsius. Right? And then the mass is just the mass of the substance in grams. Delta T is the change in temperature which is going to be your final temperature minus your initial temperature. All right, so we're going to be using that equation anytime we have a change in temperature or a change in energy. Um, the change in kinetic energy occurs anytime we have a diagonal on our graph. So that's where our temperature is changing, our energy is changing, our kinetic energy is changing, anytime we have a diagonal on the graph. Now, if you look here, anytime we are in the solid state, the liquid state, or the gas state, we're going to be using the Q equals MC delta T equation. The C, the specific heat value, is going to be slightly different between the solid, liquid, and gas. Those values will be given to you. Now, on the graph, anytime we have a plateau, that's a phase change. So we have a slightly different equation for that. The heat of fusion occurs anytime we are moving between solid and liquid. So whether we're going from solid to liquid or going from liquid to solid, we are going to be using the heat of fusion. So if you look on our graph, B, we are going from solid to liquid. So we're going to be using this equation to find out our energy. At point Z on the graph, we are using the heat of vaporization because we are going from liquid to gas. That equation is also used anytime you go from gas to liquid. Let's look at an example. So in this case, I've already worked out the graph for you. All right? We drew a heating curve with a melting temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, so 15 degrees Celsius is where we're going from solid to liquid. And our boiling temperature is at 35 degrees Celsius. So the graph is already done for us. Question says, how much energy is needed to heat 15 grams of the substance at 5 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius? Now, if you go back and look at the graph, on the graph, going from 5 degrees to 15 degrees Celsius means we're going to be in the solid state. So we are going to be using the equation Q equals MC. C is our specific heat when we're a solid, and then delta T. Okay. We don't know our Q value. That's what we're solving for, because it says how much energy. The mass in the question is given as 15 grams delta T is the change in temperature. So that's going to be 15 degrees Celsius, which is our ending temperature, minus 5 degrees Celsius, which is our initial temperature. That gives us a change in temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Now, in the question, uh, it's asking us to find the energy. And we know that we need the specific heat of the solid. This is given to us in the question. So the correct equation that we're going to be using, since we're in the solid state here and we're changing the temperature, we're raising the temperature from 5 degrees to 15 degrees, is going to be the Q equals MC of solid delta T. We have all the information we need to plug in here. So Q equals MC of solid delta T. 
Okay, so our mass is 15 grams. C of solid, our specific heat of the solid, is 2.0 joules over grams degrees Celsius times the change in temperature, which is 10 degrees Celsius. So when you crank that out in your calculator, you will get 300 joules. That's our answer. The next question asks, how much energy is needed to heat 12 grams of the solid at 15 degrees Celsius to a liquid at 15 degrees Celsius? Okay, so notice here our temperature is not changing. We're still at 15 degrees Celsius. So that would indicate a plateau on the graph. Another thing it tells us is we're going from solid to liquid. Anytime we go from solid to liquid or liquid to solid, we're going to use the equation for the heat of fusion. So in this case, we're solving for Q again. The mass is 12 grams and the heat of fusion is given to us. The heat of fusion is 100 joules over grams. And we've identified that we're going to be using the equation M heat of fusion. So the mass is just 12 grams. The heat of fusion is 100 joules over grams. When we multiply that out on our calculator, we get 1200 joules. So the math for these is relatively simple. The challenging part for these questions is figuring out which equation is correct. The next part asks, how much energy is needed to heat 18 grams of the substance at 22 degrees Celsius to 31 degrees Celsius? So we are changing temperature here. And if you look at the graph going from 22 degrees Celsius to 31 degrees Celsius, we're in the liquid state. So we're going to need the specific heat of the liquid, and we're going to be using this equation here. So anytime we're just changing temperature, we're not changing states, we're using the MC delta T equation. So we're solving for the energy. The mass in the question is given. It's 18 grams. The change in temperature, delta T, is the final temperature, so 31 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature, which is 22 degrees Celsius, which is 9 degrees Celsius. That's our change in temperature. The specific heat of our liquid is 5.0 joules over grams degrees Celsius. And the equation that we're going to use is MC of liquid delta T. All right, so at this point, we're just plugging in. The mass is 18 grams. The specific heat is 5.0 joules over grams degrees Celsius. And the change in temperature is 9 degrees Celsius. So when we multiply that all out on our calculator, we get 810 joules. All right, let's do one more. It says, how much energy is needed to heat 7 grams of liquid at 35 degrees to a gas at 35 degrees? So in the question, we know our temperature is not changing, and it's also telling us we're going from liquid to gas. So that would tell us that we are going to be changing phases, which means we're going to need the heat of vaporization equation. Anytime you go from liquid to gas or gas to liquid, you need the heat of vaporization. So the energy, in this case, we're trying to solve for. The mass is 7 grams, given in the question, right there. The heat of vaporization, um, which is given, is 1,000 joules over grams. And we've already identified that we need to use our heat of vaporization equation. So 7 grams times the heat of vaporization, which is 1,000 joules over grams. When you multiply that out, you get 7,000 joules. So again, the most challenging part of these types of questions is just figuring out which equation to use. Right? Remember, anytime we are going to be changing temperature without changing states, we are going to be using the MC delta T equation. Anytime 
we are changing phases, we're going to be using a heat of vaporization equation. Good luck and have fun with these.